Today we're going to talk about the five step path from surviving to thriving and specifically the different problems that we face on different steps along the path. So if this is your very first time about hearing from about this five step path from surviving to thriving, great. I'll walk you through it. It'll be awesome. And if you've heard about it before, I'm talking about things I've never shared before in the podcast uh, and getting just really, really specific to help you even more just identify where you're at and help you focus on the correct problems at the right time. Because a lot of times we're overwhelmed because we're trying to tackle all the problems at the exact same time, at least in our brains, even though we can't physically do it. And so we become very overwhelmed and very frustrated and start to shut down and become less useful to ourselves. When instead you go, I'm in this phase. Oh, so these are the problems that I handle and everything else I can let go of for now until I'm in my next phase and then I can face those problems. It's a much more empowering experience and it has helped me over and over and over and over and over again and just have the clarity I need to be able to move forward confidently and stop all of the other coping mechanisms that do not help me because I am overwhelmed and not sure what to do. So we'll go ahead and jump in. Hi, I'm Jessica Jackson, and this is the new way to thrive in motherhood by leaning into who you are, what you love, your unique family situation and personal mission to create a life that you actually want to live. I want to invite you to join me in saying no to the life of the exhausted supermom, burnout, victim thinking, being pulled in so many directions, suffering through survival mode, or being lost in motherhood, and say yes to building strong families and moving forward on our greatest goals in order to create a fulfilling life that we are excited excited to wake up to each day and become a soaring mother. This is the Thriving in Motherhood podcast. You can get the free checklist to help guide you through the action steps that you need to take in each one of these phases at thrivingandmotherhoodpodcast.com slash checklist, free gift for you today. So if this episode helps, definitely go ahead and download that guide. We are going to talk about the problems in each of the different phases. Now, as far as the solutions go, I'm putting together a brand new program called the Surviving to Thriving Toolkit, where I address all of these problems and more and create really helpful, tactical um, solutions and principles. So you learn the principles for things. You'll learn like if, if it can be if it can be shortcut and I can give it to you, I'll give it to you. If it's something that it's important that you understand the principles so you can replicate it and customize it for your own life, you'll get that. And it's something where every single lesson is standalone because if you are in these, you know, motherhood seasons where things are constantly changing or things are hard or what, whatever it is, right? We, it's hard to come into a program and stick with it to the very end. And so this is created in a way and designed in a way that you can come and go from it as you need and get massive value without having to remember what you watched last time or what you did before or all of a sudden it's out of date and not relevant. This is like, that's why I'm calling it a toolkit because you get the tool you need when you need it. So you can learn and like sign up for the wait list on that at thrivingandmotheredpodcast.com slash toolkit. I'm not exactly sure when it's being released yet versus when you're hearing this video because I'm recording it in June while our family's on a road trip for July when you're seeing this. And so it'll all work out. But as long as you go to that toolkit page, you'll get on the wait list or find out when it's available. But today let's talk about the specific problems that we are solving in each one of the phases. So survival mode is when things are bigger than you. When things get so big because of your you know, circumstances that you stop doing things the normal way. We all get to experience this when we become moms for the very first time. For some of us, it's a little bit rockier than others. Some of us, it like bottoms you out to existence mode. Other ones, it's like a slight blip on the radar screen while you figure out what life looks like. You know, we're all so different. Both are good. Both are, both are hard, actually. Both are, it's just a process. But anyway, but these survival mode circumstances can come up when you're moving, come up when your husband goes out of town, come up when you're pregnant or postpartum, can come up when uh, you have mental health struggles or when uh, your marriage is struggling. So uh, there's all these different circumstances that can create it. And it can be for a short time, it could be coming home from, you know, on a trip where you, know, you come home and you had stopped doing all the things. And so it feels like a bit, you know, of a survival mode season because you don't have your systems and routine and it feels crazy. So there's all these different circumstances that create survival mode and they can last for lots of long, you know, short time or really long time, just depends. And we don't typically get to choose how long they last. And sometimes like when you get sick, all of a sudden the family's wiped out by the flu, you don't get to decide when they happen either. So these are, that this is survival mode, okay, <laughs> circumstances. So some of the challenges that we can have, meals, right? Feeding people, just like the day-to-day -day care of feeding yourself and feeding your kids. Um, also not having the energy or desire to, to do that, you know, eat or feed people, create things. Or if, you know, if you're like our family, kids then get very resourceful and they eat things, whatever they want, wherever they want, however they want, and it gets messy. 
Um, you know, for yourself, like in these hard seasons, maybe you just want to watch TV or you just want to scroll or you just want to read a book. Um, and or maybe you want to be by yourself all the time. Like maybe that's a coping or maybe you want to be with other people all the time uh, and out of your house with other people. Uh, either way, it's not indicative to routines and systems, right? Um, having the emotional availability might not be there because you like you might not be for your children like you need and want to be and so therefore their behavior starts acting out right and you feel even less available to manage it and so there's some really emotional complex things that happen there um marriage can be like stress like very stressful and not feeling unified we certainly have had the problem where we both put our heads down and we try and solve that problem our best way ourselves and we feel like we're going in two different directions you know parallel and both getting super burned out and very frustrated with each other and you feel like you're totally alone and coping by yourself, even though both people have the best intentions at heart and they're both trying their best. And, you know, like it can be very lonely. Um, the house like falls apart, right? Things are messy. There's toys and there's trash and there's projects and food everywhere. Surfaces have got piles on them. Uh, kitchens have kitchen is the dishes in the sink and they're all dirty and it's hard to do anything that you need to do and cook in there. Um, nothing to use. Emotionally, it can be very discouraging to find yourself in this phase. Uh, you can feel like you don't have time for yourself, that you feel reactive and grouchy. Um, it can be, you know, you're feeling depression, you're feeling a lot of mom guilt because things are the way they are and, and all of these other problems, right? You can add guilt on top of all of these things. Um, you can feel burned out and overwhelmed by all that needs to do and all that needs to happen is you just feel totally buried in this. Um, there can be the grumpy attitudes and the fighting and you feel surprised by this and just really like you had plans and now you can't do those plans and it's so annoying and, and angering, honestly. Uh, you can find yourself just spending hours and hours on your phone scrolling and mindlessly trying to numb all of the negative feelings that you have about it. Um, if you're a homeschooling family, it can be hard to be consistent with things and not have enough energy to do things together, not want to gather everyone together. Let it, it's easier just to let people do whatever they want. Um, it's hard to gather, you know, get the kids to come back when, you, when you're separating because things are going slowly. So that is survival mode in a nutshell. There's a lot of the problems that come with survival mode in a nutshell. So if you, those sound familiar to you, you might be in survival mode. Um, and if you have, and, and, or think back when you were in survival mode, right? Like this is just part of life. Um, with the next stage is re-entry. And a lot of people still feel like they're surviving when they're in re-entry, but this is actually where you're learning to climb out of the hole. And you are having to catch up on all those things that you stopped doing while you're in survival mode. So these are the things like the laundry and the dishes, okay? So house, bathrooms are disgusting. Like you want to know what st st stage we're in? Go look at my bathrooms and you will know if we are in survival mode or re-entry or you'll, you'll see. It's my bathrooms. Um, laundry might be in baskets and piles. Maybe it's in various stages of clean or dirty, but they are everywhere, right? In the piles and baskets are full. Every surface in the kitchen is covered with stuff, needs to be dug out. Um, and the, like getting kids on board, uh, like to help clear the spaces and not just like clear and getting piled up is a real challenge, right? Because everyone's used to just dumping and piling things. Uh, personal habits, like when I was pregnant and so, so sick, I had to relearn how to get dressed, do my hair, brush my teeth, take showers. I didn't do many of those things for a long time. Um, you know, have space for taking care of yourself spiritually and, uh, are you exercising, taking care of your body? Like maybe not, it needs to start, right? Um, you've, if you've been so focused on just managing and getting through each day, then there's this like switch that needs to happen on, okay, but how can I think about the next day too, right? Like getting out of that mindset, getting enough sleep might not be happening. Um, emotionally, uh, feeling totally overwhelmed and stressed because there's so much. There, like, there truly is so much and it's all screaming at you right now. Uh, people are going to be grumpy. You're going to be grumpy. Kids might be grumpy. Uh, barking orders to get things done because you just want them to get done. You can't understand why the kids won't just come help you get things done and stop making messes while you're so desperately using all of your energy to clean things up. Um, there's too much to do because you stopped doing things in survival mode, right? Like it's just overwhelming. Um, marriage, things can feel like they're getting worse and not better when you hit re-entry because the stress just continues to escalate and you are getting more tired as you're trying to burn through all the things that have to happen. And so that can just feel really bad. And sometimes that might come out in your conversations with your spouse. Um, 
so, and then there's just like a lot of these personal habits, right? Like whatever we were doing in survival mode to cope, there needs to start to be a shift to, if we're going to get through re-entry quickly and successfully. So, and then, the, and then another challenge is that as you make progress in one area, you see that it was undone in a different area. So it's hard to know even what's working, what's making a difference, because again, it just feels like whack-a-mole sometimes in re-entry, try to get yourself out, especially if it's one of your first times through re-entry. Like if you haven't made it before, you don't already have systems in place like that you're going back to, it feels absolutely like whack-a-mole. But once you do make it through re-entry, once you do have some like people are fed, like you have meals and people have clothes, then we're ready for normalizing, okay? So normalizing has its own set of problems. And I think this is where a lot of us put our time and energy are the normalizing problems. So much so that it exasperates the problems and the mom guilt and the desperation that we feel in survival mode because we're so focused on solving problems as if we're in the normalizing phase when we physically and emotionally and mentally cannot. So just like the distinction between these is critical and crucial to understand. So problems with normalizing uh, with the house. You want to make meal planning easier and cooking and preparing meals. We want to make laundry easier. We want to make kitchen cleaning easier because we use it all the time and bathrooms cleaning easier. Okay, that's the house problems that we want to tackle in normalizing. Uh, the personal things. Starting to create some semblance of a morning routine, an evening routine for yourself, probably for your children. Okay, with kids, some of the challenges that we have in normalizing here is getting kids to help clean the house, right? Setting up some systems so they're a part of the process. Problems of letting you getting to a point where you'll, you have the capacity to let them in with the cooking, with the cleaning, with the tidying, instead of just doing it all yourself. That's something that needs to be developed. Helping everyone get used to the routines. You getting used to routines, kids getting used to routines, like adding more structure into your life can feel very uncomfortable and unfamiliar until you get used to it and can start to see the benefits and the blessings of having some more structures and routines. Um, being consistent is hard because um, there's not like you, like learning to figure out when you can be consistent with certain things is a challenge. When can you be consistent with your cleaning? When can you be consistent with the different schedules and routines? When are you gonna have energy for those things? These are things that have to be thought about and figured out. Um, with marriage, things that are challenging now in the normalizing phase, you know, things you're working on are having a regular date night, carving out space for you guys to be together regularly in a positive way, planning together. Um, having good conversations together. These are things that start to happen in the normalizing. You kind of, you're at a, you're getting out of emergency mode. And so now you want to start carving time for your marriage in ways that are predictable and will feed that marriage regularly. And also for yourself, normalizing time for yourself, you know, is a, if you haven't yet figured out how to have time for yourself during the day, whether you're a homeschooling mom, you have a mom with baby and toddlers, or you have kids at school and a ton of different activities going on, like Carving out time for you is really important. So this is something that is, if it hasn't already happened, it, was, it wasn't one of the things you nailed down in survival mode to help get you through, normalizing is when this happens. These, these the di desires of wanting to make things easier, wanting to make things simpler, um, but the work and the effort of it feels hard and overwhelming. There's this concern that you have to give up things that you want to do to create more of these structures and routines. Like a lot of resistance goes into, oh my gosh, if we're going to be more routine and more consistent, then I have to give up the spontaneity or I have to give up my personal projects or I have to give up the things that I love doing to create space for the stuff that has to happen if I want to do it. Um, it feels boring to do the same things over and over again. And yeah, worried that the cleaning task is going to take from projects or, or things that you enjoy doing or your own work. Like where are you going to have time for that? Um, knowing how to not introduce too many routines at the same time so that they actually can get taken off the ground. Another challenge, another problem. Like how do you introduce these routines in a way that they'll stick and that are sustainable for your family and doesn't get everyone frustrated and, and burned out? Like that is a challenge, right? We have to figure this out. You're tired. How do you normalize when you're still tired? How do you create some of that consistency when you are exhausted? And it's hard to not only do it yourself, but to get your kids to do it too. Like that's a whole nother level. Also, just the realities of normalizing has to happen every time you switch seasons. So when you switch to like a new family rhythm because of the change of the seasons, whether you had your kids at summer, you know, they were at home for the summer and now they're going back to public school, or they were at public school and now they're coming home, or you've got them home and you're homeschooling and you've got seasonal rhythms of winter and spring and fall. And what does that look like as different activities are starting and stopping throughout the year? You know, all of these things, like all of these transition points, you have to go through this normalizing phase again. And so how do you address those, okay? Those are normalizing 
problems that you get to tackle that are really exciting when you get there, but you also don't want to get stuck there because a lot of moms lose themselves in motherhood. When you say like, I feel lost in motherhood, chances are you got lost in normalizing. You didn't move on. You got stuck there, stuck worrying about the kids, stuck worrying about your house and didn't get to move on to exploring. And the other thing I want to point out your house is not perfect at the end of normalizing. This is not the dust bunnies under the couch phase or the fingerprints on the light switch phase. We get there, you do get to tackle those, but not in normalizing. We just need things to be good enough so that the fi things that feel like fires all the time are not fires so that you can have some bandwidth. So the fires, what I think are constitute is your household fires are the things that come up every day. It's the clothes, it's the food, that's it, clothes and food, okay? Those are the everyday fires. We gotta get those put out so that you've got bandwidth to think about other things. And then we can come back and work on more systems for the rest of the house, okay? But we need to not get you stuck in normalizing. So let's move on. We then move to exploring. And this is where you start to discover what you love, what your family loves, things about your family culture um, and your marriage and what type of life you wanna live and where do you wanna invest your time and your energy. Most people, I didn't know when I became a mom what my favorite color was, what type of food I liked, what did I like to do? I don't know. I had gone to school and then I graduated at college and I worked and then I had a baby. Like there, there wasn't like time to figure out me and all of a sudden you're at home with this baby all the time and now you're like, what on earth do I do? I'm bored, right? So we have to go through this exploring process and again, your version's different than mine, but we all have to go through this exploring process. And often over and over again, every time life changes, I still have to go through this. So problems in exploring, you don't know what you wanna do. You have lots of ideas of what to do, but don't know which one to move forward on. You're thinking a lot, but you're not taking action or doing things like, okay, we're spinning and exploring. You feel like all you do is things for the house and whatnot. And you need to think like you are the only one that can change that, right? You feel like you can't leave kids to do things. So how do you explore when you have kids? How do you do that? Good question. Money is a limiting factor. How do you explore when you don't have money? Now, all of these things, like I had little kids when we were in grad school. We had absolutely no money. We didn't have babysitters. My husband was super busy. There wasn't time. We've never lived by our family. So this can be done, okay? All of these things can be done. There is hope. But again, these are the problems I want you to be focusing on and thinking and solving in these different phases. You're not sure where to start. Like, how do you get started doing this? Maybe you feel like the people around you are not supportive uh, on the things that you wanna do or the things you're interested in. You feel like you have to make money from your thing. And I'll tell you right now, you do not have to make money when you're exploring, you just have to explore things, okay? Mom guilt gets in the way. Like you're worried that whatever you do is gonna take away from your family, take away from your kids, ruffle feathers, mess things up at home, like, there's the mom guilt. And even if the kids enjoy them, we can still feel mom, like feel that mom guilt, right? There's this hurdle of, of thoughts and things that we have to overcome to get through this. And then the fear and uncertainty that comes with doing something unknown. How do you do things with interruptions? How do the capacity to do things even though things aren't perfect with the house yet? How do you manage those things? So these are some of our exploring problems, right? We're trying to, you're trying to figure out what my purpose in life is and you're like, ah, <laughs> I'm drowning, okay? So that's what we tackle in exploring. And then we have our thriving problems, okay? Thriving is really exciting because up to this point, it's pretty scripted out for you about what you need to tackle. Like I'm telling you, when you're normalizing, we're gonna figure out your dishes. That's what needs to happen. When you get to thriving, this is where it gets a lot more customizable. And to be honest, this is where I've kind of been teaching a lot is this thriving stage and neglecting the fact that there needs to be way more structure for the first four stages, for survival mode, for re-entry, for normalizing, and for exploring. Now I've been doing all of these things and I just haven't shared them with you, which is where the surviving to thriving toolkit comes in. But the reality is, is when I talk about the three pillars of thriving, you know, when you have these three things in place, you can feel good. And when one of them is missing or misaligned, that's when you feel like you're also surviving. So if you don't have those three pillars, you're surviving. And I realized each one of these pillars is applicable in survivable, there's a, in, in each one of these phases, there's a specific vision, scope, sequence of things that you're trying to do in each one of these phases. There's specific systems in each one of these phases that you can pull out and use to help support you in each one of these seasons. And there's specific things for your soul that you can do in each one of these seasons to help you manage better, manage well, and get rid of some of that suffering that is happening unnecessarily because we're making things harder than they need to be in each one of these phases. And so those are pretty like scripted out tools. But now what's really exciting is when you hit thriving, the new problem is creating your own vision. 
you deciding what you're going to focus on, you deciding what you wouldn't put your time and energy, energy into, and you'll be able to because you've went through exploring and you already have a good idea of what you want. So now we form that into your own vision. So learning how to form that vision, learning how to plan, set goals from that vision and projects and habits, learning how to do your weekly and monthly and quarterly planning and reviews from that, learning how to... Um, do all the things where you fit the house stuff in with your own personal projects in with the relationships, things, you know, the relationships that you want to balance and serving and, you know, the things that make a well-rounded life. Those are some of the problems that we solve in thriving. But then there's also the problems like now we have to develop systems in thriving. So learning how now to create your own systems, learning the process of systems, learning how to introduce them to your family, learning how to do it you know, collaboratively and in a, an exciting and a hopeful and a building way and not like laying down the letter of the law in everyone's miserable way. Um, getting buy-in from your kids and customizing them to fix the specific pain points and problems in your own life, okay? Those are some more thriving problems that we solve. And the soul pillar problems are things learning how to create your day with God, learning how to co-create your life with Him, learning how to have very sustainable habits that are nurturing yourself so that you can keep going and pouring into other people. Okay, these are, again, some of the things that we are solving in that thriving stage. So I hope that as you're listening to this, that it's giving you some ideas and hopefully some clarity about how to narrow things down and how to shorten your to-do list and to be less busy because you can see, identify which phase you're in and where to put your time and your energy and attention. I know that when you're in survival mode, you can see the whole list of problems, like start to finish through the whole path and feel like you have to do them all and you're spinning around. When really, we just need to help you manage today and make tomorrow a little bit better too, okay? And I know in reentry that it like feels like you're so buried deep, but again, we need to help you get a short clarity, some very specific skills in place so that you can and systems for just getting through that short burst of, you know, push of these projects that have to be accomplished and normalizing. We just need to get a few pegs in there, okay? And your things are going to get so much better. It's not a never ending. I feel like in normalizing and feel like this never ending problem list to solve. And it's not. There's just a few things you need to solve until you can start exploring. And then you can start customizing your life and figuring things out. So this is going to be all in the Surviving to Thriving Toolkit. Uh, and again, if you want to be up like informed first one to know what's happening first one to know when it's coming out because the best this launch is going to have some of the best offerings that i'm going to have at the best price so you can learn more about that join the wait list to be the first to know at thriving and motherhood podcast.com slash toolkit and be able to get all the information that you need thank you so much for joining me today i'd love to know in the comments below what problem you want to solve and what phase you're in and so let's just start narrowing things down. And even if you don't put it in the comments, I want you to think through that. What phase am I in? And what is the most important problem for me to solve right now in that phase to help me today? Because then you can stop scrolling and you can start solving the right problem. So let me know. Love to hear for you what is going to make the biggest difference in your life right now. Um, we were planted, watch the grow.